Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, I'm breaking in, but for a different reason. Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is Alex. Alex writes, I've been watching many of your videos of a wide variety of tennis topics which are truly interesting. Thank you so much. You've talked about tennis balls, but have you talked about used and old tennis balls? Old balls, he laughs. Um, and where they go after we discard them. Balls these days only last for a few sets. They become practice hitting balls for a little while longer, but they soon become completely dead and dogs can only play with them, play with so many. If I'm correct, these balls are made mostly of nylon and rubber and they don't biodegrade in the landfill for 500 years. Are there any organized efforts in the U.S. for collecting and recycling dead tennis balls? If there isn't any ball recycling bins in, in one's area, what can a tennis player do to minimize the horrific environmental impact caused by dead balls? Please keep up the good work. Yours truly, Alex. Alex, I did a video probably a year and a half ago about um, a ball recycling program that Wilson did in conjunction with uh, a different organization. But um, if you go to wilson.com, there is a site there that you can order these like recycled boxes that you can put at your facility. You fill that up, uh, you send that box back when it fills up and they'll send you a new one. Um, some of the things that we do um, at the tennis clubs is a lot of the animal shelters take them, as you were mentioning, the dogs will play with them. Um, the schools will actually take them too. Like some of the grammar schools will use them for the bottom of the chairs, um, as well as some of the uh, retirement communities who will use them for walkers. So there is a second life after the two sets and the um, being practice balls and serving balls at the end. Um, we just have to kind of, you know, find them. Sometimes if you're a tennis organization, they'll find you. Well, we get calls all the time for used balls. Uh, so there is life after two sets and uh, serving, okay? Um, maybe I should do a follow-up video on this because uh, it is a important subject as we try to save our environment, okay? Um, thank you so much for the coffee and thank you for helping to save the earth, Alex. If you wanna be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. If you wanna support the channel, super thanks is the way you can contribute as much or as little as you'd like. Link is below. All right. Thank you guys so, so much. Mm. Hot today. My man Dan, come on in. So I called in my man Dan. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> because we are breaking in to the big threes rackets. And we are going to find out the actual stiffnesses of them because we have now the Bayardo Pro to do this. Stay tuned. Since it's so early in the morning, does anybody remember Romper Room? I do. Anybody? Oh, Coach Dan does. So what did we do at, what did Miss Nancy do at the end? I see Roger and Harry and Rafa, <laughs> she had a magic, a magic viewfinder. Yeah, I think it was, like a was it a show. magic mirror, mag, magic. magic magnifying glass. I forget what it I was. Forget. Yeah, romper but, room. 
but it, it's it was like a preschool kind of 30 minute deal that was on television out here in the west coast it was on channel two at 6 30 in the morning i, I vaguely you remember, remember. This clearly wow <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was a bunch of kids that basically just did preschool things. You know, you you got into these boxes that looked like cars and you walked around in them like you were a really car, you know, and and the kids were well behaved. I think they were anywhere from like probably four to five years old, maybe a little less from what I remember. I don't remember the kids, but definitely remember Miss Nancy, though. Um, I don't remember Miss Nancy. You don't remember Miss Nancy? Yeah, I'll have to look that up later. Yeah. I'm pretty sure her name was Miss Nancy, though. Uh, <laughs> but I think there was another teacher after that uh, called Miss something else. But I just remember Miss Nancy's in the head. But, okay, so let's, <laughs> we're thinking about the good old days. <laughs> this was in the 70s, <laughs> maybe the early 80s. Um, I don't remember the 70s. You don't remember the 70s? No. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> He must have been. <laughs> Anyways, he must have been studying. Studying uh, for college. Right. Um, so we got the three rackets. We got Roger's real racket. We got Novak's real racket. And we have uh, Nadal's real racket here. And we're going to test out the stiffness of each of these rackets. We're going to test out the stiffness of it going this way and this way. But... A lot of people have asked me um, a question that you see in a lot of specs online and in the company's um, descriptions of every racket spec, and that is RA. And there's a number after the RA. Does RA equal to stiffness? What, what is that equal to, Coach Dan? So um, RA is, uh, so the, the Babolat uh, machine, it was called the RDC, which mm -hmm. is the Racket Diagnostic Center. Its measure of horizontal stiffness, they call it RA, which stands for racket analysis. So it's just a term uh, that refers to how stiff is the racket when you when you support it here and push down here. Mm -hmm. So it's just a flex number, it's a, essentially. It's a number of flex, yep. Got it. Yep. So RA, racket A analysis. So you would think it would be racket S. R Stiffness S would make more sense. Bending, yeah. Right? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, we, anybody out there in tennis, if you can control RA uh, and what it's called, let's change that to RS. Mm -hmm. That will make more S as in sense. Make more sense. Okay. All right. So we got the three. We got Rafa's on here first. My guess is that's the stiffest one of the three. That's my guess. It's hard to tell. It'll definitely be stiff this way because of the shape of the beam. Mm -hmm. No question. This way, it's also probably a thicker uh, beam, so I think you're right. But you might be surprised uh, at, at how stiff they can make some of these rackets, even though they appear similar in terms of beam mm -hmm. size. Okay. We'll find out. Let's, since Rafa's is on there, let's okay. go with Rafa's. We'll show you also how this machine works, which is a lot of fun. Yes. So... You want to um, do the, the the balance and weight, or you want to just look? Well, at we'll just go for stiffness. We we'll just yeah. go for stiffness. Oh, yeah, great. That's my, all we want. That's all we're doing how, today. How stiff are we? How stiff is it? Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, I have found in using this machine over lots and lots of rackets and looking up what they say online that the online number is generally consistent um, with what I get on this machine, but not always. So sometimes there can be some pretty big variances um, here. So the first one I'm, they, on the machine, the Bayardo Tune Pro, it's called horizontal bending. They call it bending. I'm gonna clamp this bad boy down. I'm gonna put a little pressure here on the Rafa. All right. Now, now hope it doesn't break, right? So we're so preparing this, it we got the this, brace over here this all the way against the top and okay we are going to so we're, flex we're, the racket we're, we're holding it down here we're supporting it here and so this is showing me racket flex basically from the middle close to the middle of the balance point on the tip so you can see if you push it down that we're going to actually measure that okay here we go hold your breath don't break <laughs> and it's going to do it twice to get it make sure it's accurate 
and I don't know if it averages the two, how that works. So he gets a 69. 69. What's 69? 69. Okay. 69. We're gonna save that one, and we're gonna go to vertical bending. Vertical, as in this direction. God, so works. Dan, yes, sir. that first number, which was 69, um, that would be RA. That's the RA, and, they're, and both these numbers are, are measured in RA uh, per the machine. And they actually show you on the machine, they give you a little bar graph, and it kind of shows you sort of how does that stack up in normal terms. And that 69 is kind of at the higher end of what this machine deems as normal. So that's kind of an interesting reference point huh. uh, that this machine seems to know. I guess it's got some intelligence. Which means that 65 might be the middle number then, right? Something like that, yeah. I would, I would say that's probably true. So I'm just going to line this up, make sure it's in the right position. And you can see this is what it's going to measure here. Okay. All right, start. There it goes. Yeah, you see it bending down. Eighty. Wow. Eighty. That's a see. That's okay. the top, the top of the scale right there. Interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen anything higher than an eighty huh. on a racket. I might have to bring a profile in. That's a that's a big number. <laughs> okay, you want to do the others? Let's do the others. All right. We got Novak's up next. This is fun. So we'll just do the same test again because it's uh, you're writing those down, right? I am. Okay, so I'm we'll taking just, notes. We'll just do these all at once. Oh yeah. Uh, such a beautiful machine. So Rafa's is eighty. Going so this, this is way. this is the only number you can't find anywhere, online or elsewhere. No one measures vertical uh, stiffness, and we'll talk about that in a minute because I think it's uh, very relevant. Okay, start, and it'll, it'll line it up. Oh. To the eye test, that looks like it's bending more. Yeah, it's softer. Mm -hmm. 67. Yep. So that's that's probably more similar to your average somewhat stiff racket. And we'll do we'll grab uh, the Fed. The Fed. As opposed to the, the, the Federal Reserve. <laughs> not the Federal Reserve. Which is well, tax whole, season just got extended, right? Which is right? just a whole nother discussion that we're not having today. <laughs> my blood pressure can't take it. All right. I need to save that one. We got the bank meltdown going on. Yeah, this is the Fed. <laughs> How stiff is the Fed? Here we go. The banks have a thing called stress test. I wonder if it's measured the same way. <laughs> under stress. It's under, what happens under stress? 60. 80. Oh, I 80. thought it was 60. I told you you're going to be surprised. Oh. I actually knew that because I measured this racket before. <laughs> um, 80. Wow. See, that's, and you'd never know it just by looking at it. Okay, now oh, we're going to go the do, other way. Do yeah, the other way. Let's go the other okay, way. Okay, sorry. Got a little excited there. This is on loan from Wilson, so so thank you, Wilson, for letting us try this out and yes. show the world uh, what what can happen if you have a, the right tool. Yeah, thank you to my man Jason, Jason Cash. Thanks, Jason. What's his name? Jason Cash. Cash. Yeah, I like Cash. <laughs> Save seventy-one. Seventy-one. So that's a pretty stiff horizontal and which one was left this we one got Novax Novak these are worth how much are these worth Harry an original signed uh, thousands yeah at least are we gonna talk about these signatures we'll uh, do that at the end sure okay we can talk about that yeah I want to do some signature analysis all right horizontal all right this is so cool. I want to mess up that signature start okay. here we go I say this is the softest I agree I'm like 68 
65. 65. 65. Woo. I said it first. You know, I got two rules, Harry. Rule one is I'm always right. <laughs> and rule two, refer that's, to rule number one. That's not what your wife said. No, no. She's, all, <laughs> she's actually all, she's more always right. Than I'm, yeah. Save. All right. You want to talk about the numbers? Let's talk about this. Um, all right. So I'm going to have you hold it there. But, but I need you to look at it, obviously. So um, does this surprise you? Me? Yes. Uh, Rafa's with the 80, but so is Fed. You know, I'm, I'm aware that the, 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 the speed rackets are, are a little softer this way. Um, you know, I'm not sure I exactly understand what does vertical stiffness do to how a racket plays. Mm -hmm. um, this, this doesn't surprise me. It's a little softer here. Um, Rafa, you know, 69 and 71, those are essentially the same thing. You wouldn't mm -hmm. feel that difference. And obviously these are the same. So um, they, they're very, very stiff this way. Uh, no, this, this doesn't really surprise me. Uh, this this surprises me that this number is the same as this number given the beam construction because mm -hmm. this is so much thicker um, on that on that vertical side mm -hmm. and so how do they make this that stiff that's just that's just carbon fiber layup right mm -hmm. there they can basically make it any way they want and they and they do this intentionally um, this this uh, vertical stiffness theoretically is how much the racket bends this way correct which would affect your slice and your top spin right if so if that's stiff. Uh, you're going to get uh, more power in that direction if you're swinging it fast enough. Mm -hmm. If you're swinging it slower, up and down. So Novak, you know, hits kind of through, more through the ball. So this isn't hurting him too much, having it be soft up and down. So he doesn't have to worry about um, the racket kind of dying out on slices and top spins. These guys are swinging them up fast. They need a n more uh, stiffness here. Um, this is this is pretty soft though. Uh, I think he I think he'd play better with a little more uh, 68 or so. He'd be a, a, he'd be a better player. Not that he's not good. I'm gonna have you hold this for yeah. one second while I explain a couple of things yeah. uh, real quick. Um, so this racket is actually not the stock racket we see up there. This is actually an old mold mm. of something maybe 20 years old. It's actually a 95. Mm. And uh, not what it appears to be. It's it's actually um, a PT something something. A, a bunch of numbers that is a special make for him mm. and a bunch of head users. Mm. So this and the one on the wall is is not the same. Mm. Uh, so that's why these are what they are. Um, it is a more flexible frame because he does hit through a little bit. So that totally makes sense to me. Um, the other thing that you talked about was that these numbers and why you explained it perfectly. Thank you. In that um, we understand that back in the day, we used to go straight back and straight through. Now we're measuring th this part because there's more of going like this, like you said, which is perfect because we hit with a lot more top now. We don't hold it like we used to do. We hold it like a frying pan. So a lot of our shots go vertical and therefore we have to consider the flex of the racket going this way. If you think of a racket, um, if you think of a racket, the carbon layup of each racket doesn't, the fibers don't just go like this and like this they're actually woven together therefore with it weaving it you can control how it's woven and how it flexes this way and this way therefore when you're doing this it's the 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 woven fibers that either firms up or softens up right so so it just a side note um, the new Wilson shift for example has a, a very very stiff a horizontal mm -hmm. and a very very soft uh, vertical mm -hmm. this way and what they what they're trying to achieve is is having more flex coming up to think it'll get more spin um, I actually think they went a little too soft on this number mm -hmm. and and my conclusion after after playing with that racket is when this number and this number are very far out of alignment mm -hmm. the vertical and the horizontal kind of interfere with each other it, it feels like the 
the the soft part's kind of trying to fold around the, the stiff part. Mm -hmm. And so in looking at all of the rackets I've measured uh, and looking at these two numbers and how they play, my, my most current thinking, and again, I'm definitely not the guys that are doing the layups, is that these numbers need to be kind of balanced so mm -hmm. that you're using the same swing weight to come through it as you, and the same swing, swing speed this way as this way. So on the shift, you have a nice slow swing speed here, you get a lot of power, but you really have to accelerate to get the same power coming up because this uh, vertical is so soft on that racket. Um, and so that's, that's my thinking here is that when these get closer together, you're getting a more consistent playing experience. So we're close here and here. So we're this is 11 a, points different the, the, there. This is, this is pretty well aligned. And these I, two are, but, that's a but, nine and that's yeah. more. But I think, I think once you get up to, to numbers like this, you're, you're sort of past what you can use. Now maybe these guys can swing it fast enough coming up mm -hmm. so that the racket will actually flex uh, with a racket that this stiff. For you and I, um, anything over about, say, 70 here uh, won't make any difference to us. It's stiff, stiff, or stiff. It's a, it's a, it's a rock either mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, so most rackets don't really get. We don't above. generate enough head speed for it to work. Exactly, okay. and and so I think you know the the current rackets they on the off the wall you know they might get seventy seventy. Um, the burn, for example, is a really huge number. It's like seventy seven seventy nine. It's very 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 stiff. Uh, so you have to really crush the ball to get that racket to flex. Mm, got it. So what's our uh, what's our conclusion here? <laughs> Well, our conclusion is that these guys are gods, okay? That's, that's the bottom line, is they are using so much um, uh, topspin and, and they can slice the ball with so much force that their rackets are designed to, to, to work for them using, using these kinds of numbers. So, you know, when you're making a racket for the public, you gotta figure out what's the average advanced player, intermediate, beginner player doing as far mm -hmm. as swing speed. Right. And, they, and they design rackets, they fine tune rackets. So when someone says, Oh, your racket was uh, was too stiff last year. They come in and they tweak these numbers a little bit. They say, "Well, let's give it a little, let's give it more feel, right?" When they say more feel, like the new um, the new Onyx E Zone, you know, they drop this number a couple of points because someone said, "Oh, it felt too stiff. I want to give it a little more more plushness to it." Um, so these are very valuable numbers to to think about, um, especially this this horizontal. I think, you know, if you've got a a, a clash, it's like a 59, 59. That's a very soft, plush racket. Really good for kind of beginner, intermediate, upper intermediates, because um, they have a slower swing speed, and it's you're going to feel the racket. Mm -hmm. uh, for more advanced player, you need to start going up this scale here um, to get more more the right amount of flex for for a faster swing. Right. And so I think it's it's very useful to look at these numbers when you're looking at a racket, uh, and you want to make a a spec racket to one of these guys, um, and you want to you know I want to make my my racket like the Fed racket, right? Well, you better be measuring your, your bicep before you do that um, to think that you're gonna be able to swing it hard enough to get this racket to work. The good news is you can't really change this, yeah. but it's good, it's good it to, to measure it um, or at least look up the spec before you buy a racket. Um, and, and they can all be a little different right off the wall. That's right. the other thing to think about is it's great to have a machine like this. I pulled three brand new pro staffs, all four and three eighths off the wall, and they came in with, uh, with different specs, both both balance, uh, swing weight, um, weight, and, and these numbers varied a little bit, not too much. Um, Got it. But that's it. Okay. All right. Coach Dan, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. All right, so now you know the vertical stiffness and the horizontal stiffness, which is another name for RA, these numbers, of the big three. I want to thank my man Dan for showing us the way in the numbers. Thank, thank you. you, Coach Dan. Thanks for joining. All right. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Hey, Coach Chris. Hey. You string tennis rackets? That's right. We'll make a little extra cash. Sure. You know, with direct tennis, you can be the official stringer of your own neighborhood. You can set the distance, you can set the meeting place, and you can set the timing. So I can string on a street corner? You can set your own place. It's all at Direct Tennis where they put players with stringers and stringers with players. Check them out at directtennis.online. Link is below.